us with three particular students and collective bargaining with the East Aurora Faculty Association. Do we have any agenda changes? No. Thank you. No items requiring board action. And superintendent comments. Um, um, I just would like to start off with a statement um, to address the horrific uh, tragedy that occurred uh, this Saturday in Buffalo. Uh, we stand united with, with all school districts in Western New York and all community members in Western New York denouncing racism. Hatred has no place in our community. Please join me for a moment of silence for the victims, their families, and their friends. Thank you. Um, well, today is um, a special day for, for some of our students. Um, each year, the superintendent's art collection um, started decades ago, and we're going to research. We're going to try to find out when the actual date was, but we know it's gone back before Mrs. Whopper's tenure, which is <laughs> it's not dinosaurs, but it's been a while. And, and so we know it's been several decades, and, and the, the art collection is really quite amazing. So each year, the, the art teachers have a very, very difficult uh, job to select just one uh, member from the group that they teach uh, to add their, their piece to the superintendent's art collection. Uh, and today we have Haley Roth, uh, Elisa Silva, Avery Zach, and Anna Call with us, uh, four brilliant artists. Uh, and I'm going to turn it over to their art teachers uh, that will talk with them and help us to explain their work of art. Mr. Craigum. Mr. Van Ostrand. So Mr. Van Ostrand, I'm the uh, curriculum coordinator for the art department. Uh, also in the art department, we have Mr. Kegler at the high school. We have Mr. Wallhauser at the middle school. And we have uh, Ms. Piccolo uh, down at Parkdale. So my student uh, is from a studio and art class, which is the fundamental art class uh, that we have at the high school. It's the one that they need for that art credit for graduation. And uh, uh, Anna, you can start coming up. Um, she's uh, a sophomore, and traditionally this is a freshman class, uh, but uh, I didn't uh, hold the, the sophomore against her. Uh, the work that she was uh, producing was uh, exceptional all year long. And about, um, I would say it was February that, that this project was, maybe January. Um, this, uh, as soon as I saw it, I said, this is the piece. So I, I was holding on to it for uh, a couple of months before this came along. And I'll let her tell you a little bit about the assignment. Oh, I'll hold you. Okay. Um, it was an uh, impressionistic piece with a lot of colors and pastels. So I just did windmills with uh, sunset in the background and water. Uh, I had to use a lot of um, pigment on it because it was black paper, so it's kind of hard to show up. So I did a lot of blending of colors, uh, one colors for the sunset, and then short skirts for the uh, water. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tom Kegler. I also teach at the high school. And uh, as Mr. Russ was alluding to, it, it is a difficult task picking one piece. I was kind of doing the math in my head when he said that. I've been preparing for the art show, um, which we'll talk about in a little bit, uh, for the past few months. And I've already prepared over 100 works for the show myself. And there's probably three or 400 other works that I've been looking at over the past year. So it was really difficult to pick one work of art to represent um, the superintendent's collection. So um, it, it's, it's always daunting, but it's also really um, fun to challenge the students to see where they go. This year's pick for me was Kaylee Rock. And um, the, the class that I picked this for was actually drawing, which is actually um, a fairly fundamental class. And we, we teach in that class the basics of observational drawing through a series of exercises that challenge the student to really observe and draw what they see. And uh, 
the, the piece that I chose for this was uh, the second major project, which was a still life. And they were asked to basically bring in some, some objects they found interesting, perhaps had some symbolic value, and um, basically use a set of drawing pencils to create uh, a variety of value scales and, and build that skill level up. But anyway, she did an amazing job. I'll let you kind of talk about your piece. Sure. Okay, so basically it's just a camera, a seashell, and the seashell is actually like one of the first seashells I ever collected um, down at the Outer Banks. Um, and then like a glass base and then just some grapes. I mean, I tried to make sure that the composition, you know, was interesting and simple at the same time. And then I want, I tried to build up some nice contrast so that it was like interesting to look at. Awesome, Jeff. As with all of these works, I do encourage you when we have a little break to come up and take a look at these close up because they're really impressive. Or as Kelly mentioned, um, Kaylee is a junior, so I am super excited that I'm going to have her in AP art next year, oh. um, which is which is one of our more challenging classes. And um, now that she has obviously uh, a set of skills to begin the journey in AP. I'm really excited to see where you go with that. So, and then um, as I understand, you're an aspiring art teacher and potentially looking into um, maybe opening a shop at some point. Yes. So, uh, some some creative endeavors that I think will do well with you. So, congratulations. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dave Wells. I was from here in the middle school, and this year's artist is Avery Zach. Uh, Avery made my job easy as far as looking at all the artwork. She really. Uh, <laughs> is a great great student and artist uh, she's currently a seventh grader and i've had the pleasure of working with her in uh, for the last couple of years and it's been an awesome to watch her grow as an artist just amazing every project she tackles with creativity and enthusiasm and it's it's contagious it really is she's amazing <laughs> she built, brings in her own media to work on projects and uh, uh, a true artist and an awesome student. So I'll let her tell you a little bit about her project. So this was a one point perspective piece. You were supposed to make shapes and have some sort of object like go in and out of them and such. So I did this piece with uh, a micron inking pen, uh, Prismacolors, alcohol markers, and uh, paint markers. So basically, the thought process here for making it was for the different cherry blossom. I actually use my finger to blend it out and make it look more splotchy and like blossom. So that's pretty much it about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I walk around and then I see Avery's in the, you think you're not supposed to be part of the art teacher. <laughs> quite a, quite a, a fantastic artist. Good job. I love the tallow. I'll have a lease, a lease that come up and hold that I work and I'll do the packing. I write a little sniff it out. I'm so incredibly proud of this year's student from Parkdale, Lisa Silva, is in fourth grade. She continuously has been creating amazing artwork since I started working with her. Her dedication, craftsmanship, and care is always evident in all of her pieces. When choosing a piece for this year's collection, her bright color choices for this project is what caught my attention. We were inspired by Canadian artist Ted Harrison, his abstract landscapes and use of colors and lines. She did a great job doing her own twist on that in this piece. I'm very proud of her, and I know she'll continue to make masterpieces like this and all her other work. What we'd like to do is maybe can we bring all the art stuff and just stand next to your painting, and we're just going to take a quick quick picture and then we'll give everybody a chance if you'd like to take a little break and come up and actually get a closer look because I think you'll 
really be amazed at just the quality of your work. Yeah, that one is making me a little nervous. I can't help but find the, the oranges from her because I was around the, at, at the years no, no, I know you're worried about the wire there. So at any rate, um, so you just I have to go to the walk around this building. I know exactly what I'm going to look at. Once I find it, that's it. Yeah, it was done by Barb Peters' daughter. Yeah, it's a it's an oil painting on on the board, and it's framed with a narrow black frame. It's about that big. But there were there were others. That was the only one that I remember Thank you. from the first one. Thanks. But there are others from that same year, and they all have little brass plaques with the painting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll stop by because it, it could be that. It's tough because it's several years ago. And that is the black one. To save money later on. I'm sorry, we all started asking around. And then they didn't want to look at it. Mr. Keckler has an announcement. Now they said, oh, we're going to give it up so they can take a picture of it right now.
Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you to our artists and our amazing art teachers. Yeah. Always such a highlight of the year. Thank, thank you for you. sharing. Did, did you, did you, tell, did you want to say something? Yes. yes. I'm say thank, thank you. you. If everyone could, excuse me, folks, we're back in the meeting. Thank you. Uh, just before we depart, I wanted to uh, thank the Board of Education for supporting the arts. Uh, we're very fortunate to be teachers in this district. And uh, thank you and thank for all the parents and community members and our seniors that are here. Um, the two special nights for the art teachers are definitely this night, uh, a chance to celebrate one uh, very special student. But then our second um, very uh, special night is next Monday. It makes it special um, because we haven't had an art show in two and a half years. Uh, it's been uh, two years off on our show. So we are super excited to announce our district-wide art show next Monday night at the high school. Uh, food trucks, I believe, will be arriving around five-ish. Uh, and then the, the actual show begins at six. So it, I, I personally hung over a hundred worse and have them ready. I know most of the other teachers have similar. So there's gonna be a really wonderful representation of our student body from all three buildings. And it's uh, one of the uh, you know, highlights of the school year, definitely for the, for the our teachers, but also I think for the district itself. So I invite you all to come uh, and thanks again for coming tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for sharing your talent and for sharing the works of your students. Incredible. And everyone, please mark your calendars. It'll be so good to be back up seeing everyone's art in person. Thank you. Uh, moving on to board president and board members' comments. The policy committee meeting met uh, last a week ago, Monday on May 9th. We are continuing to do the work nearly weekly. Thank you to Mr. Mambretti for continuing to herd the cats and move us through this very, very in depth review. Uh, thank you to Mrs. Daniel, Mr. Kesky for participating, and to Mr. Russ, of course, and to Ms. George as well. Uh, stay tuned because we have policies on the agenda coming up. This is a while I can Nope. Okay. Mr. Mallet? Um, yes. Uh, Joe and I both did uh, a webinar. Sorry. Joe and I both did a webinar called Collection, Selection, and Objection, uh, which had been referred to, uh, referred to um, the rights of the rights of parents kind of talk about um and the rights uh in teachers administrators and so on uh when it comes to curriculum in regards to the collection selection of curriculum and objections that might come in and um one of the things that jumped out at me is the authority of the board and precedent the precedent has cited the boards of education over the years it says the authority of the board of education to prescribe the course of study in schools including the use of textbooks is broad the parents of a student cannot compel a board of education to use a particular book or to discontinue the use of a particular book. They can observe books and ask for an independent study. They always have that right. But I think it's important as things change in this world that we be aware. Um, and as many people, I, I printed off the, the legal part of it. If anybody's interested in it, you're welcome to it. Um, it's important information Thank for the you. future. Thank you, Mr. Mallet. Yeah, I'll just add that uh, that was a it was a, a, a great day spent. Uh, I was actually in person at BOCES with um, Ms. Lyons, Mr. Mambretti, and our high school librarian, Ms. Muriel. And um, and then there never did I think I would be taking a day off work to spend the time with 600 plus librarians from around the uh, state, but there I was. Um, but I think that it was valuable time and that uh, from the policy committee standpoint, I think we'll have uh, things to talk about and uh, and it'll help us uh, strengthen those. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, and I just want to add one more thing onto that is, is or I, I want an additional thing. I also had the pleasure of attending all three unified basketball games. And oh, yes. I, I mean, I tell you what, if you're having a bad day, go to one of those. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah. That is one of the most uplifting experiences you can imagine. So bravo to everyone who has been involved in that. That's where my life started. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Cassidy. Mr. Flowers. Well, just to note, the, uh, Mrs. O'Weil and I participated in the uh, League of Women Voters Forum the other night with potential candidates for the school board, and it was a little bit grueling. It was, I think it was like 15 questions. Even when we thought they were done, they still had another one. But they, <laughs> they put a lot of time and effort in it, and and I know someone was missing, Mrs. Brunson, Dan, our thoughts were with her. I know she's been a big part of that for years, and she couldn't be with us, but 
some of us had our thoughts with her, and I just wanted to share that with you. Thank you very much. But it was a, it was a, it was a good event. I think people seem to enjoy. It. I was watching around the world, so <laughs> as far as I know, it really that's all I have. Though. Thank you, Mr. Flowers. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Daniel, anything to um, On May six, the safety committee met. Uh, we went through the the general information for each school. Um, just discussed any um, safety issues that had come up. There was really nothing pressing. Pressing. So a majority of our time was spent looking at the um, the the district safety uh, plan. Emergency response. Yeah, that's why I should pull it up. The district emergency response plan. So we spent a majority of our time going through that methodically and just comparing it and having discussions about that. And we're going to continue to do that um, at our next uh, meeting, which will be in the fall. Is that? Yeah, it must be in the fall. Yeah, yeah, we'll have because that was that was that our most. Uh, that was the end of our meetings for this year. And then our next, um, the other meeting I attended was the Code of Conduct. Um, we have another one tomorrow. And that was with Silweiler, Mr. Brunson, and Ms. Silweiler was also at the safety committee meeting. Um, and we basically went through the BOCES uh, Code of Conduct and our Code of Conduct, and we are working our way through with various stakeholders, administrators, um, members of the board and just working our way through the code of conduct. Um, it was students. Uh, and students, yes, parents. So um, we are working our way through. It was about three, three and a half hours. We met last week. We have another um, extended meeting again tomorrow. And the plan is to hopefully have this um, reviewed and ready for July. So that's, that's kind of it. Thank you, Mr. Daniel. Mr. Brunson? Well, I just like to extend my. Uh, appreciation to the policy committee. I, I spent the better part of this afternoon reading the policies that uh, we're voting on tonight. And I had a little trouble uh, the last time. I, I confess that I may have voted uh, for the first reading without having actually read the <laughs> song. I, I figured that I, I really needed to uh, to devote some time to them this afternoon. But there, I love that first group of policies. I, I would have voted uh, positively for them uh, in, uh, in an informed way but i knew i had one more chance to, uh, <laughs> this time so I, they're, they're really good policies and they're succinct and they uh, focus on uh, what what's appropriate for our school district and i know how hard it is to do this kind of work because i've done it before myself so the the uh, i appreciate the, the the work that the committee is doing and uh, this is a, a long list of policies today uh, well done. Thank you. Thank you, Francis. Thank you to all the board members for your participation on committees and the hard work that you do away from the board papers. Very much appreciated. Administrator comments? Mr. Bra Mr. Brown? I have a very brief one. I just want to make sure that you all received the email that our LEAP capstone event that was originally scheduled for tomorrow night has been postponed to next Thursday. So it'll be Thursday. Maybe you didn't receive the email. Um, <laughs> he received the invitation. And then since then, we did end up having to change it. So the capstone event will be Thursday, May 26th at Knox. So um, you should all be receiving an email <laughs> <laughs> um, that was sent out today. So thank you. Thank you for the heads up. Aware of that. Hopefully you can make it. I, I'd just like to. to just make a comment on that the last time they had it it's been a couple of years now unfortunately but they did they've done it a different way um but i think the opportunity at knox is really unique uh and the last time we were there i have to say it was blown away by the quality um thoughtfulness of their work it's it's really a, a year-long project um that they that they focus on and each one of the students has uh, different ideas and, and they bring it to their teachers and the two People who are monitoring it are really doing a great job facilitating their uh, their students' um, ability to step outside and really think about things differently and create some things that are just really quite amazing. So, uh, if you have a chance to go, I know there's a lot of things, right? We've got a lot of things going on, but that is one of one of the, the great events of the year. I really appreciate that a lot. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Do you have a time? Yes, yeah. six thirty. Okay, six thirty. I heard you. Well, I was just going to say the last one that we went to that that Brian was uh, was just mentioning. They call it a passion project, and that came out loud and clear with those kids when I was talking to them. 
and you will notice the same this year. Oh, it's just that, right. that's just worthwhile going to. Yeah. Thank you. Got yeah, one Mr. Moore brief announcement. So our Rocket Club, uh, we had mentioned last time they qualified for nationals. So I just want to give them a little congratulations. So the members of that team are Thomas Riker, William Freddy, Oliver and Calvin Saxuk, Adam Grabi, and Parker Madigan. So they went this past weekend to the national competition and among uh, 100 teams, they placed uh, drum roll 21st out of 100. Um, and the top 24 teams qualified for the NASA Student Launch Program, which allows them to build a high-powered rocket and launch it in Alabama later in the year. So they were oh, within the top cool. 24, so they qualified for that second honor. Right. So congratulations to the Thank rocket. <laughs> so they're hopeful that they can replicate and potentially even improve next year. Yeah, it's, they're uh, launching it to Alabama? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, just a comment on that. That's um, been a, a work in progress. We started the Rocket Club a few years ago, uh, and every year they seem to get better and better. But this year, the to qualify for the national uh, rocket launch is really, really difficult. You are competing against teams from across the country, and and just to get to that level, but to finish in the top twenty-four is just extraordinary. Lots of engineering, lots of time and effort, creativity, all of that's going into making that project work, teamwork, because you have all these different people working on the project, along with the, the guidance of, of, of Mr. Wall as well. So we're grateful for his work too. But the kids are just doing amazing things, and that is really exciting. I can't wait to, to you see You can see happens. the excitement in their faces. Like every yes. time they come in the office, the pride, it's, it's really yeah. It's really a great honor. It was in Washington. Yeah, yeah, Washington. yeah Virginia. Yeah. So just briefly tomorrow, you'll, or excuse me, Thursday, uh, you're going to see all of the seniors um, performing community service uh, around East Aurora, um, from Knox to uh, Camp Chicanoke Sandwich outside of East Aurora to Providence Farms to uh, Hampton Park. So we're excited uh, to bring that back for, for the second year in a row. Thank you, Jimmy Screen, um, who's our community service uh, coordinator for organizing all of those opportunities. And I think we have some excited uh, community groups and locations uh, that are going to have some of your volunteers. Uh, so we'll do that all day Thursday and finish up at the high school for uh, an afternoon barbecue. And then on Friday, it's prom. Uh, mm -hmm. So we have 300 students who are going to be attending our prom and mechanics and Chafee. And then uh, we'll head back to the high school for post prom. So we're thrilled to uh, have a, a traditional prom back this year. Uh, and if I can just comment on that, I'd just like to thank the PTO again for coordinating post prom for us. It's uh, going to be a, a great event, um, as it always is. And I'd also like to thank uh, Mrs. Impruda and uh, Mrs. Uh, Mahoney uh, for the senior banners. Um, they helped us to coordinate that again this year, and they, they got it started uh, two years ago. And this is the third, uh, the third graduating class that will be uh, represented on Main Street. So we're really grateful. Everybody seems to love it. Lots of positive feedback from the community. The parents really, really love it. And uh, and we just thank them for coordinating that for us every year to make sure it's taken care of and, and to the village as well, because they have to change the flags on all mm -hmm. it's 75 or 80, 80 um, uh, posts. Uh, and then they're going to use the equipment because we bought the, the brackets. Um, so we bought the brackets. So we're going to lend them to the village who are then going to display veterans um, banners after our students banners come down. So that's really nice as well. That's cool. That's a good idea. Else, any other administrators with comments this evening? Thank you all for being here. We're moving on to item eight community comments. Um, yeah, so hopefully, everyone will read that in the agenda. Um, first, before I forget, as I've been known to do in the past, we did receive some letters. Um, on May 6th, we received a letter from uh, Ms. Liz Cassidy regarding sign ordinance. Uh, signage ordinance. New York Rock and Review sent us a message on 5 9 regarding um, the video availability of our Board of Ed meeting. Laura Nicholas sent us a message on 5 9 regarding candidate legitimacy. Doug Tro sent us a message on 5 10 regarding absentee ballot availability. And Becky O'Connor sent us two messages 5 13 and 5 16 on the Farm to Institution representative 
um, and additional information on the bidding process. Board members, have you all received those emails? Yes. Thank yes. you very much. Um, we have one request uh, to speak with a um, community member, and we ask that members address board respectfully and limit your comments to three minutes. Uh, Mike Hard. Okay, never mind. Thank you. Moving on to item nine, reports and discussion items. Item A is the 2022-2023 Board of Education goals. We have adjusted the evaluation process that was outdated. So we are now going to discuss our goals for the Board of Education for the coming year. I've made some notes from things that I've heard from each of you individually, but would anyone like to kick us off with a recommended board goal or a topic they'd like to cover? I'll start since we're in the budget season. We have a budget vote today. Um, I do like the committee structure that we have. A lot of work gets done. A lot of work's getting done at the the, the building levels and, and filtering its way up to the superintendent's office, the business office, and it gets to the committee structure. I do like that. A lot of work gets done. What I would like to see a little bit more of is a little bit more information brought to the full board so we can discuss some of the um, – we all have our own priorities. I think we could share those a little bit and see if we're on the same page with some of those priorities as a group. And uh, and certainly as we take a look at uh, weaning off of the uh, COVID grants, moving some expenditures or some of the expenditures from the grants back to the general fund, we certainly want to do it respective of the school district tax levy. And uh, with the best, and maybe bring some options to the board of how we can Take that tax levy, and certainly you know, there'll be an increase. You know, every year there's an increase, but you know, maybe moderate, moderate that a little bit um, with some with some options to uh, as we bring that forward. How can we bring it to the general fund uh, with uh, the minimal impact on the tax levy? I think some of that needs to be discussed uh, with the entire group, especially if we're talking about. Uh, maybe taking a look at some of the coursework we have, some of the, I mentioned that the other night at the uh, at the event we had, see what our enrollment is in some of the elective classes and see if that's viable for next year. If not, then maybe some of the money towards some of those classes could be moved over. So I just think some of those discussions we should do as a full board, but the committee structure still has real value and a lot gets done. So I did talk about that as a goal. I don't know if the board wants to accept that as a goal, but that, that's where I'm coming from with that. Thank you. I'm going to suggest we throw a bunch of ideas on the table and then make sure everybody gets a chance to be heard and then we can decide how we do collectively. Danny? Um, one of, one of um, my board goals would be for us to hopefully get back into, obviously with COVID and Pinto, but doing the retreats because I found those to be very worthwhile. Um, we would pick a topic for some of the board members that maybe weren't here at that time. Um, we would pick a topic and then we would meet and we would um, with administrators and we would discuss that topic, you know, in detail. And and it was very educational. I thought it was a really worthwhile process to do. So I would like to obviously we couldn't do that because of COVID, but I would like to put that back on our on our list of goals to maybe set up a board retreat. Um, and I don't know. I think we used to do it with the administrators, and we tended to do them more educationally, it's so right. with less discussion and more uh -huh. receipt of information. Right. Um, so we definitely did them with the administrators, and then the ones where they were discussion based, it would tend to be more workshop team building. So it wasn't right. So even doing both of those, then whether or not we can do more of the workshop, or it's just our board, sort of the team building, and then. It, maybe once a year doing the ones with it that more the education focus, okay? Um, other other recommendations, suggestions? I would, uh, I, both, both of those I, I agree with wholeheartedly and uh, in particular, Mr. Blowers, you know, coming on as a, a new board member who hasn't also been part of the budget uh, process prior to life on the board, um, you know, I think that I think that understanding more of where my my voice can be heard and where I can contribute would be helpful, and that I guess ties into the the goal that I I would add to those is uh, develop some sort of onboarding process for a new board member, 
um, having gone through this, uh, despite my familiarity mm -hmm. with the the board and the meeting processes and all that, there's so much to learn about this service, um, and it can be it can be um, it can be overwhelming and. It can feel if personally, you know, there were times where I, I wasn't sure who to go to and I didn't want to bother people. And so I, had, you know, sometimes, you know, didn't go. Uh, but I think that if we were to put together a, a, a way to bring people on board um, and maybe give them a, a, a board buddy, if you will, uh, of sorts to sort of get that, that's the person you, you go to when you don't know who to go to. Uh, so that they, they feel comfortable at least, you know, bothering that person um, because they're meant to be bothered. Uh, so that uh, that would be my that, that would be a goal from my perspective. Thank you. We're saying it's really rough the first year. It gets better. Is it enough? <laughs> I, I believe you. <laughs> Thank you. Who else has a suggestion? I actually am going to piggyback off of Mr. Cassidy's because that was the one that I thought was really important creating some type of new member handbook um, or have an orientation and again do the mentor um, yeah peer mentor in a sense so last year we were um, talking about appointing a person we spoke on camera about what it is to be a board member and what your role was and what you're going to have to do and, and not have to do and I remember Dan you spoke and it was absolutely amazing so that's something that I've Think would be really beneficial for all um, potential new board members once they get on the board to watch that video again because it was it yeah, had everything that you would need. That was great. Yeah, yeah you saw. Um, yeah. And and I think, wish I could remember it, but <laughs> that must have it's been probably wonderful. on video. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, we did do orientation programs for new board members for many years. I yeah. I helped with uh, with Judy and. and uh, Perry when they first joined the board. And uh, it's fun for an experienced board member to be able to sit down with a new person and uh, listen to what their concerns are and help them through the process. So I, I second that. I said, all three of these ideas are excellent. And along that same note, as we know, when you are a new board member, I think we want to encourage um, the new board members as soon as possible to go to those mandatory trainings that are required because Absolutely. I think you have a full, if I remember correctly, it was so long ago, but I think you have a full year to attend that mandatory training, yeah, sure. but you are so much better off going to that mandatory training as soon as possible yeah. because it has both the finance perspective yes. and then your role as a board member. So it really can help to get all of that um, set out for you. And then obviously all of all of your fellow board members helping you, but I think that encouraging any potential new board members to attend that as soon as possible is important. Paul has run those uh, the financial part of those training programs for uh, for the school boards association over the years. Paul, do you do you find that rewarding? Do a uh, meeting with uh, groups of new board members from other districts as well. It is, and and, me, and doing it in person is a better option than virtual for sure. And I know the, the classes they have out here, I think it's two two hours might be virtual and four might be in person or whatever. It's beneficial all the way around. Anytime you can meet people in the same line of business you're in or whatever, you, you learn stuff and, uh, and trade information. But yeah, I enjoy teaching it, but I enjoy being part of the classes too. And along those same lines, the, the um, over the years, uh, I know I have not attended as many board development opportunities as I did the first 15 years or so that yeah. I was on the school board, but but since the pandemic struck, I haven't been to hardly any of those except the virtual ones. And and so I, I think we need to get back to going not sometimes as a whole board, other times in twos and threes to these opportunities and and have a chance to to, to not only learn, but to get to know each other better as we do that. I, I can yeah. still remember our entire board being at the uh, school board's convention when it was downtown Buffalo at the convention center. And I could see, uh, you know, I'd be coming from one session going to the next and I saw three or four of our board members and administrators sitting around uh, talking about one they had just been to. So uh, they, it's, uh, I, it, it, this coming uh, 
conference is not in Buffalo, but it will come back to Buffalo probably next year or the year after. And I think we should consider uh, when it's close, uh, all of us going and uh, participating in this. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's a, ch a chance for us to continue to grow as board members, which, uh, you, you know, they, those six hours of training in finance and in governance get you off to a good start, but it's, right. it's not enough. Uh, so you need to you need to be able to do workshops run by uh, uh, some of these really top flight uh, attorneys and and superintendents and other board members who who've been through some of the problems we're facing and have really good uh, ideas for how you can approach them. And when we met virtually, uh, well, I think uh, Nisba has done a great job of providing opportunities virtually as best they can. What was one of the other things that's so great about those in-person conventions is getting to hear from folks across the state. So you yeah. might hear somebody else who's a similarly sized district with a different challenge or a, or something somewhat related, and it sparks it sparks new ideas and develops new ways of thinking. Well, sometimes it just makes you feel good. You know, I, I remember <laughs> yeah. sitting down with the, at lunch with the Rochester Board of Education. So I was the only one at the table who was not a member of the Rochester team, but there was a seat there. You know, and there was no place else to sit. So I sat there. And I w walked away from there thinking, thank God, we're in Eastern Florida. <laughs> 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 it's a <laughs> Hello, are you there, Rochester? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and along, well, as we're talking about NISBA being, you know, obviously it's not in Buffalo every couple of years it's here, but the one thing that we always did go to, Dan, or tried to get a group of people to go to is in the summer was the long law conference. conference. And oh, hopefully, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. obviously we've done all of those, or many of us have done those virtually over the last couple of years, but I think this year it may be in person again, so yeah. potentially we could get a group of people um, that are available to go to the law conference. It's, it's well worthwhile, and it's, it's, it's two of them. There's the one run by the school boards association, right. Uh, but the, in the summer, but then the Hodgson Russ uh, conference, uh, we we use Hodgson Russ for our uh, uh, bonding at work, and uh, and they invite us to their conference, and it's wonderful. I mean, it's they they have a team of attorneys that are excel in uh, every aspect of uh, school law, and uh, so it's, it's yeah, terrific the to hear their law point of view. Changes so dramatically that I always did the special ed law that one. Yeah, because they it was just. It changes so dramatically to try to keep up on that. And Dana yeah. bring up a good point that there are reasons to work with a multitude of resources because you get more opportunities. Oh, absolutely. To learn well, Harris Beach, we still work with them for the special yeah. ed uh, aspects, and, and they do similar trainings, which are terrific to, to keep people up to date. So I'm sure our uh, administrators attend them occasionally, and we should too. So I, I need to get back on the path to. Uh, learning this year's convention is in syracuse yeah. yeah so it's a little closer um talking about the retreat that you mentioned kim um we still have the full retreat that we were supposed to do before the oh, pandemic hit that, that was in february that was that, yes yeah, so february. we still we, we had prepped all of that um but what the was other the topic do you remember mr Ready? it was um it was funny it involved toast it, 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 was, it was all on change there we were it, it was a year before the pandemic we we got snowed out so this is year and we were supposed to envision what the, this east world would look like in five years from now um ironic we, had a no, <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't have right. even it would have been funny to go back and look at those notes in light of the last year but yeah. but it is it would be still very opportune now because we've done a lot of work, especially with the new candidates that we're hiring, of kind of what did we learn? What's here to stay? What do we need to get back to? Um, visioning work uh, as we're knock on plastic coming out of this pandemic. Um, so really to kind of have a really robust conversation about there, there has been some good and some learning that's come from this. And some of the things is we definitely got to get back to doing those things. So that same framework that we were going to use to kind of predict the future we could still do that but with right. obviously a yeah. tremendous disruption to normalcy and almost kind of this is the chance to start that that rebuild uh, so all of that is prep we have copies made we have sure, powerpoints we made we have everything right. and the other one we um was patrick longo he's the member relations manager from NISBA. and when justin and i talked with him in january he said he would come in 
and he would do um, a workshop with the board on um, culture and leadership. So that's another option we have. Good. I think as we have topics for some of these things, we also ought to be thinking about how we can involve others working with us so that we can have interaction with other groups of people. Uh, there are times when it's appropriate for a topic to be simply the board discussing that topic. Other times, having the administrators with us makes sense. I think there should be times when we have teachers as well. Uh, if it's a topic that relates to learning, I don't see any reason why board members and teachers cannot get together and have a workshop, uh, a retreat. Uh, obviously, we can't take the whole teaching staff, but it, but if there's seven of us, why not have seven teachers and, and and the 14 people along with the superintendent and several other central office people get together and, and have a, a, a confab on the, that particular topic. Or maybe there's one that relates to buildings that the, where we should invite the principals to be part of, of our discussion. Uh, they, I just think we need to broaden out our, our concept of who attends workshops and retreats. There, there should be some where it would be appropriate to have students. We had two students at the Code of Conduct of Planning. Wonderful uh, input from those two folks. So there's no reason why when we're talking about something else that affects students, that we shouldn't have a few students as part of that discussion as well. That's a good point, Dan. When we do the um, visitations, yeah. we always go to Parkdale and their advisory committee is there in the so multi-purpose room. Mm -hmm have that discussion with them and they explain what's very productive. I mean, yeah, yeah so I, that would I be love that. a great, that'd be, that's a great suggestion. Well, and it shows that we're still, we're already doing some of this. And, and, and when we have, when we do do it, we come back thinking, wow, that was worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, more, the more we hear, the, the more engaged we are, the better we do our job. Sure. Mrs. Mouse, did you have any specific goals or thoughts? No, I'm short. Sure. Okay, so let's see if, if I have. Can I just make one? Yeah, go ahead. I think uh, that's. Mm. I think the law conference is back on for this year. I think I may have just received. It is. Something. I it do is. believe it yeah, is. So it's um, you should be getting. It's in August. It's yeah. usually the first August. weekend in yeah. August. Yeah, so I think means... NISMA does it. The, there's also one that they do. I think down in Rochester. Oh, they do one in conjunction with the the convention, but uh, the one we attend is the local one. And I know, Mrs. Daniel, you've done an additional. Do you've done an additional. Yeah. I do. I yeah. do NISBA and I do the local. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, you, you get CTE credit. Right. right. CLE. Yeah. C O. C L. Continuing legal education. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. Excellent. <laughs> we have we have some other tasks before us that are already. We have to decide how we. I think we've had a lot of great ideas. We probably want to boil this down to a couple of specific goals, but there may be things that we just assign ourselves and decide to do remembering that we haven't officially had board goals and we've managed to have retreats in the past so we can decide right. how we frame those things um we've talked about updating the policy manual and how important that is we are already doing that work it is underway but it continues to be something we need to hold our feet to the fire and do um we've talked about mr Blowers touched on this a bit but plans for um sustaining the positions that we brought on as we move off the federal COVID relief funds balancing needs of students and taxpayers um, and continuing to support our students and staff. I've heard mention, and this we're already we're already doing these things. Continue to support our students and staff as we as we move through in the next phase, next phase of the pandemic, and the the needs that people have that are increased from three years ago. Where would folks like to go? We've talked about those things I just mentioned. We talked about retreats. We talked about bringing um, maybe keeping committees, but also bringing more budget work directly to the board. I mean, that's my proposal okay, to, to talk about. Yes, to, um, to boil develop. it down. Yeah. Okay. We can we can frame it up however it includes everyone's wishes, um, and then developing an onboarding process for new board members. So, how many things have you got? To... Okay, we ignore all the nonsense I just said. We have um, <laughs> we have the. I, I know that I've heard different board members saying that we want to we want to focus on balancing the the needs of the taxpayers and the needs of the students. And maybe we frame that up with the review of the budget um and yeah. then bringing that to the full board so budget budget process and budget concerns retreats and which preparing preparing retreats retreats and then developing an onboarding process for new board members 
And it sounds like it's, it's almost dusting off and updating the faucets in the yeah, onboarding process. Yeah. It's really dusty. It's really dusty. Um, three, three goals, board members? Yeah. But I mean, then there's a lot of subsets to each of those yeah. goals. So it's not as though we just have three things we're, we're working at. So I think I've done those some, are the major areas. I've done some reviews of what other districts do for board goals, and it's really all over the map. So I think we, what we have the opportunity to do right now is to frame what those those goals are. I would like to see us have goals that are robust and usable and that we can move on to the following year, not just the thing that we check off to say, oh, yes, everyone, we have work goals and we've done them. Um, so I think having goals that give us room to move and and show show progress while also adapting would be good. All right. Yeah. Anyone want to pick a, a number one goal? First, first goal. I would go with the budgeting. Yeah, okay. The, the budget process. And everyone is comfortable with the idea of, um, let's say, moving more of the budget process and decision making to the full board. Is that part of the goal? And, and keeping, still keeping the the budget committee as we talked about but then i guess is it within that committee then the discussion is how this is presented or how how would that work yes keep the committee structure i think we need to be uh together we talk about what our priorities are and maybe the priorities are to keep what we have and and uh how we use the grant funds or maybe there's some other ideas from the board how we use that and uh and certainly spend a little more discussion directly with the tax like I know we talk about the tax cap and coming off of that, uh, you know, a, a, a tenth of a percent or two tenths of a percent. And I thought about maybe talking about real numbers, what it would look like if we even backed off of that further. And maybe it's something we just couldn't accept as a board and, and, and it'd be, it just wouldn't be in our, in our benefits to do that. But I just think those, if you understand what I'm saying, those type of topics, I think are for the entire board and for the public to hear. But I think a lot of the, what we do in accumulating information and the, uh, with the uh, administrators and certainly with the faculty and staff, that um, that can be done at the committee level. But at some point, we need to have an idea, what, lack of a better term, what the budget gap is, where are we, what's going in, what do we value at that point. And uh, we still have some ideas or some things that are sitting out that a superintendent has a list of things we've either completed or basically in progress and things we need to get to in the future. And I think we need to, as a entire board, review those and discuss those a little bit. But um, still, a lot of the work we've done at the committee level would be my recommendation. So what you said initially, coupled with that, you had indicated that maybe the committee could, or it sounded to me like maybe the committee could bring um, some different options to the board yeah. that would help encourage discussion. Yes, and those options would need to come from certainly administration and stuff, but at least, yes, th that's exactly what I'm saying in shorter words, yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Well, think about the discussion we've had for the last 10 minutes. That's This is a meaty discussion about what's important topics. We need to, to take that same model and use it in the development of the budget, in my view. So, so that we're looking at important aspects of the district's operation and right as the board are discussing uh, what the future holds for that part of the budget. Yeah, and, and, and that's where I was going with it as well, Dan, uh, was sort of the, the idea of the discussion about what are, what are our priorities as a board, you know, individual board members sharing their ideas, ideas and getting their priorities on that the committee then can take and, and figure out and then come back with, with the, the options. And it actually makes me think of something that I shared with uh, Mr. Russ that I had seen on um, Depew's website. Um, they had shared uh, at the beginning of this year uh, with their uh, with their district, uh, what is it, the thought exchange? A thought exchange uh, on, on board or on uh, budget priorities. And similar to, you know, that we had done one um, during COVID with regards to priorities. And it's, if I remember correctly, it's the, the one where people put ideas on there 
and the others can read them and give them a thumbs up, thumbs down. You can see how ideas are are uh, you know supported across many different people. To do something like that would take what we're talking about here, but then just send it out to the district and get a temperature and a pulse from the district on what's their what are their priorities to do that in the fall at some point sometime early just understand it would help to maybe one guide us and then further guide the uh, the committee as well it's electronic it's electronic yeah it's uh it was uh i i i think by the time i stumbled across it it was it was done uh and i'm not a member of the district so i didn't <laughs> I didn't do it, but it would be interesting to find out from them the one, if that's something they've done in the past, how effective it is, what are the pitfalls of doing it that way, and and how they how they intend to continue it or maybe never do it ever again. Maybe it's maybe it was a terrible idea. Who knows? Right, it would be great to hear more. I, I would have to imagine that getting all those voices and and being able to see what trends would be extremely valuable. Was this a few? You said? Yes, it was. It was Dr. Rave, right? Yes. We, we've done some research into the water exchange, so we do have some. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. awesome. We've done some research. Yeah. That on for future no. conversation. But so I understand that this is just within the district, though. So the community, we're not really talking to the community about any of these ideas. Is that correct? Well, it goes out to them. It goes to it goes to the the, the all the all the the community members within the district to to share well, their it's not thoughts. just district families it's the entire community it's good right so so okay. makes sense. you define yeah. like yeah. so we can define it, but that's what i was trying in depew do you know how they did it did they do the entire community or was it just like it was posted community? the link was posted on their website oh. so even uh, so you anyone know, could look into it. Yeah, i don't i don't know how they put any controls around it with mm -hmm. regards to preventing guys like me from uh, <laughs> mucking up the waters, which I didn't. Right, right. Um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, it would be it would be worth investigating, and it would be an, uh, a a great way, I guess. Outreach to the community. To, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a great it, outreach to the community. So. Yeah. It's great because we 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 have requests to do workshops and forums with the community, but we know that those tend to either be very poorly attended. Or, or it's a faction of people who come to talk about yeah. one topic. It doesn't reach into the broader community. Yeah. So I think exactly. the more ideas we have for outreach, the better. We're more likely to reach more folks the more we. Yeah. Yeah, because the there's. Yeah, because there's only so many people you know that we can all speak with, and right. um, this this casts a much wider net. Yeah. Thank you for the idea. Um, so back to goals. First goal. Um, Keeping the committee structure, move the budget process uh, in the through the budget process, move more decision making to the full board. Topics would come to the full board, include uh, big topics such as the tax levy. More, th I will work on framing this in a way that makes more sense. More thorough discussion and conversation on the budget at the board table. Anything else I'm missing on that one other than make that make sense? Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you. I, one thought that popped into my head as we were talking. Um, Joe, I, I recognize that the pendulum swings and we've, we've tended to, to push more to the committee and let the committee come forward with the administrator and the superintendent's recommendations. Um, in the past, we have been much more in the weeds at the board table to the point of board members laying on their swords for particular classes. Um, and I, I would suggest probably somewhere in the middle is going to be our sweet spot. I think we always want to be listening to the people who are closest to our students yeah. when it comes to what the programming needs are. Uh, but of course, we're, we're supposed to be representing the community, so we might be hearing from other folks. Any other thoughts on that one? I agree with that. Okay. Just want to get that out there before we were fighting for any particular thing. Um, second topic was, let's go with retreats. That is, that's my that's my goal. Have retreats. Have retreats. Yeah. Well, it's retreats, retreats and board development in general. Yeah. All uh, right. Thank the, you. The, so I've always felt that individual board members should have their own development plan, and and that would include things that we all did together, like retreats. Oh, now you're consolidating my third into a second because board development would include board onboarding. Yeah, I think. Well, yeah, that's uh, sure. <laughs> 
retreats and board development. Um, I, I suggest we aim for it, at least one retreat in the coming year. And I think if we have two, I think what, it, what I've heard from the table is possibly a smaller retreat, maybe the Patrick Longo culture of leadership would be board focused and then maybe something broader and we can think about what's appropriate if that visioning work goes as far as teachers and students. Um, that, that could be a really big, quite a mind expanding opportunity. Let's do something fun together too. We bowled one year. Oh, I know. That was great. Was fun. That was memorable. Oh. Even though I didn't bowl. I kept score. I would have liked to be a fly on the wall, not a bowler. <laughs> you know, as, as I've heard so many of, of us speak about the school of visitation and how we really appreciated the advisory committee of Parkdale, this is something we've been doing for years. Maybe that's something we should then, when we do the next visitation, middle school and high school have their advisory team be there as well so we can have a conversation. Mr. Brown did that. Right? Yeah, yeah, we did that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Mr. Brown. Yeah. yeah. Um, and actually, we did do that in high school too. We usually meet in high school. We meet upstairs. Exactly. Yeah, we meet in the office upstairs with. With some of the counselors, Mr. Roberts. Well, with yeah, some of the we counselors, we don't. Well, we've been with the counselors advisory. for a couple of years. No, but in yeah. previous years, we I yeah. thought we would meet up. with the with it's the always been the advisory that this year doesn't count. Okay. Yeah. That was right. One suggestion I would make: whoever takes over that visitation, be thoughtful to the the teachers have their parent teacher conferences that just hit that big lump in the fall. And if you can just do them before that, it's it's a gift to them. I mean, they don't have to worry about, oh my God, is this conference day or, you know, it just makes it easier for the administrators, I think. Um, can I ask the board to remember that comment at the reorg meeting and why don't we start planning right then? Okay. Right we, pick our, we pick our committees and let's start talking dates that things need to happen. Second goal, um, Board development to include retreats and an onboarding process for new board members. Any other thoughts? No. All right. I'm going to see if I can find that video. Right here. Or we'll recreate it. Yes. So we can remember. On a bus tour. Because even yeah. Paul said how valuable that was. To know exactly what your role was going to be, what you were expected to. Sorry, made a video. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we we didn't make a video. We had a conversation that was recorded. Yeah. Oh, so you well, may not so recall I, making okay, a video. That I can buy. Yes. I don't remember. I don't remember making a movie. <laughs> a movie. Well. I live in a land where I just assume that I'm always being recorded. I'm not doing it intentionally. It's just happening. So. We, we were recorded when we had the, the board meeting discussing our goals yeah. for um, the appointee. Uh, right, choose an onboarding process for new board members. Okay, I will write something up that we can look at, point to, follow, and accomplish. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Fantastic. Bye, guys. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye, guys. Hey, guys, thanks. Thanks. thank you for staying for this. You know, I know you can leave at eight, but thanks for yeah, staying. Yeah, nice job. Two, three, yeah. two minutes. Have fun tomorrow, too. That's, that's respectful. It is. Oh, very much so. Yeah. yeah. Good people. Thank you. I think it's awesome they're continuing that community service. Yeah, the way they're doing that. It's a really great thing. Oh my See, that's God. like one of the things that have come out of the pandemic. That's a positive thing. Yes, right? yes. Because they created this new new stew day, and it just I think great. that's one of the things that came they out of barbecue it. and then the prawns. Yeah. I mean, I think that's yeah. what a wonderful week that is for Super all the students. Yeah. That's a good idea. And they may actually be working at Knox because, um, are they working at Knox this year? Yeah, so they're, so they're going to clean it up before our, our 
Absolutely. So, <laughs> 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 so it's, it's uh, they, they were really grateful because they, they, they have wedding season last year. And so our kids came in and yeah. they cleaned all the grounds and they're like, wow, that's really helpful because we have a wedding like three days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Mr. Roberts, this, this can, like, like last year, this meets, this fulfills the requirements for community service. For everybody? Um, next year, the plan is to do two service days for the fall and spring. Okay. And then, um, I'll tell you that we are looking to expand it to that's, that's great. That's just awesome. It's probably one of the best things. I, I just think that's so good. The community comes back and talks about it. I hear it all the time. So it, it's very cool. The, the other thing that we're, we're doing in, in Providence Farm was was a dabble in that is, is expanding it beyond each for uh, Oh, that's what I do. Uh, town and building on uh, expand out today. So you're going to see some of those opportunities for the one. They used to be just on you at home, like, right. they just moved. Sure. Not that long yeah. ago. Especially for that project, we're going to have students who have some artistic ability or those who don't. Um, we're going to work in with, with each of the um, families that have farms there, they're going to design uh, uh, nameplates uh, for their plot of land. Uh, so oh, that's, so that, cool. that, that's one that I'm, I'm looking forward to. There's going to be translators who are going to be there working with our students so they can communicate with the, the family. That's so awesome. Special, special that's that's special. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, moving on to item 10, legislation. Is there any legislation to come forward for this evening? Item 11, is there anyone who wishes to, a board member who wishes to withdraw a consensus item? No. May I have a motion to approve the consensus item? So moved. Moved by Mrs. Oweiler, seconded by Mrs. Daniel. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Sentence carried seven zero. Items required in board action. All right. Here's the policy. Thank you, Mr. Mabrani. Here we go. Item A the superintendent recommends that the Board of Education approve for a second reading the following policies record management, emergency response rules, idling school transportation, board meeting rules, regular and special meetings, and concerns from members of the public. I have a motion. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Daniel, seconded by Mr. Cassidy. Discussion? Thank you all for your efforts. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions carried 7 0. Item B the superintendent recommends that Board of Education approve for a first reading the following revised policies visitors to the school, operation of motor driven vehicles on district property, code of conduct. Prohibition of weapons on school grounds, threats of violence in school, non discrimination and anti harassment in the district, non resident student enrollment, loss or destruction of district property or resources, and equal educational opportunities. May I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Mr. Cassidy. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Mallis. Discussion? Uh, the, the prohibition of weapons on school grounds, there is. Uh, typographical error in one of the last sentences. I don't have it in front of me here because I can't pull it up on my phone. But it's just, uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's just, you'll, it's, anybody who reads the last sentence there in that one paragraph will pick it up. Right, well, yeah. that typo, obviously yeah. without changing the meaning. Before. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's it won't change the meaning. It's just, uh, okay. it mm -hmm. should say, it says at or something, and it should say or, okay. or it's something like that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mabretti. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Brunson, for finding that typo. Everyone else, uh, all those in favor, we are approving with the amendment to the typo. The first reading. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Carried 7 0. Item 13A. We can't do 13A. I didn't read yet. All right. Well, Anybody have any good stories? 
<laughs> so that's a dangerous question. <laughs> uh, our next item on the agenda is to approve the results of the budget vote on election. So, Just a question on the annual yes. dinner. Uh, do we, oh. Yeah, the reservations for that we go through but Sue or Jackie Sue or, or yeah. what? through you. Sue. So, Sue, okay, Sue either Raymer one or Jackie. Okay. Is that Erie County? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a good event. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, just for the purposes of recording, we did start the meeting at 6.45, but uh, we did 6, 5.45, my apologies, 5.45, um, but we did not record that portion because I was a bad communicator and did not share that we were going to be starting at 5.45. Um, so the, meet, the uh, meeting opened, we said the pledge, we had a moment of silence, and we entered executive session. Thank you. I think we can. I have a good story. You have a good story? Yes. Yeah, a middle we, we school could, story. We could, we're going to we're recess, recess the meeting. Yes. Thank you. And then reconvene after. Reconvene after the, the uh, budget and election votes have been completed at 9 p.m. We're in recess. Yes. Hello again. This is the Easter uh, the, Hello again. This is the East Aurora Union Free School District uh, Board of Education meeting for Tuesday, May 17th. We're returning from a recess. We had hoped to move on to accepting the results of the annual election and budget vote, um, but there are votes still to be counted. So that the this meeting will be adjourned. The meeting will be the next meeting will be tomorrow evening to accept the results of the vote, and that will be at 6 p.m. I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Mr. Cassidy. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Malice. Discussion? All oh, those in favor. Sorry. Right. sorry. That, that was Mrs. Malice? Yeah, oh, Mr. Cassidy. Malice. Janice Cassidy. Malice. 1005. Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Carried 7 0. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Great. We have one with six.